Hello there. Welcome to the Masjid Jamik Sultan Abdul Samad, one of the oldest mosques in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, which officially opened on the 23rd of December 1909. That means this has uh, more than a hundred years of uh, existence. Now the term Masjid is the Arabic word for mosque and in Malay we also call it Masjid. Um, when you talk about Jamik, Jamik means congregation. It is where Muslims worshippers congregate to, for, per, to perform their daily prayers or salat five times a day. This mosque was built at the confluence of the Kluang and Gombak rivers, designed by the British architect Arthur Benison Hobbeck along the Indian Muslim Mughal architectural style. If this is your first time the mosque, you see that on the exterior, the mosque has two main uh, minarets, among other smaller ones. The pattern of pink and white bending of the minarets formed of brick and plaster has been described as a blood and bandage. The mosque has three domes, the largest of which reached 21.3 meters, which is about 70 foot in height. Now the prayer hall is located beneath these domes. The masjid was refurbished in 1984 and the minaret nearest the river was reinforced as it was already sloping. The masjid is strategically located nearby the Masjid Jamik LRT station that is served by the Klanajai line, the Sri Petaling line and the Ampang lines. The station is located within Chinatown and Little India. Datram Reka is also nearby. In the interior mosque, you'll find a vast empty space where worshippers will perform their daily prayers. The Masjid Sultan Abdul Samad can hold a congregation of about 7,900 worshippers. In this vast empty space, I would like to draw attention to some features there. One of these is the mihrab, which is a semicircular niche in a wall that indicates the Qibla. That is the direction of the Kaaba in Mecca, and hence the direction that Muslims should face when praying. The wall in which the mihrab appears is thus the Qibla wall. Now the concave nature of the mihrab is thought to act as a reflected sound from the imam to the congregation. Bearing in mind that there were no microphones in those days, this, away, this in a way acts as a replicator of sound. The mihrab should not be confused with the minba, which is a raised platform in which the imam, the leader of prayer, addresses the congregation. The mihrab is located to the left of the minba. The word mihrab originally had the non-religious meaning and simplify and and simply denoted a special room in a house. The term was subsequently used by the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, to denote his own private prayer room. The room additionally provided access to the adjacent mosque and the Prophet would enter the mosque through this room. During the reign of Uf Uthman bin Affan, the Caliph ordered a sign to be posted on the wall of the mosque at Medina so that pilgrims could easily identify the direction in which they wished to address their prayers. The sign was, however, just a sign on the wall, and the wall itself remained flat. Subsequently, during the reign of Al Walid bin Abdul Malik, the mosque at Na Masjid al Nabawi was renovated, and the governor of Medina, Umar bin Abdul Aziz, ordered that a niche be made to designate the Qibla wall, which identifies the direction of Mecca. And it was in this niche that Osman's sign was placed. Eventually, the niche came to be universally understood to identify the Qibla wall, and so came to be adopted as a feature in other mosques and the sign was no longer necessary. Mihrabs are a re relevant part of Islamic culture and mosque. 
Since they are used to indicate the direction for prayer, they served as an important focal point in the mosque. They are usually decorated with ornamental detail that can be geometric designs, linear patterns, or calligraphy. This ornamentation also serves as a religious purpose. The calligraphy decoration on the mihrabs are usually from the Quran and are devotions to God so that God's word reaches the people. Common signs among the mihrabs are geometric foliage that are close together so that there's no empty space in between the art. Today, mihrabs, mihrabs are very in size and usually ornately decorated and often designed to give the impression of an arc doorway or a passage to Mecca. In exceptional cases, the mihrab does not follow the Qibla direction. One example is the Masjid al qiblatain or the Mosque of the Two Qiblas. This is where the Prophet Muhammad received the command to change the direction of prayer from Jerusalem and Mecca and thus has two prayer niche. In the 21st century, the mosque was renovated and the old prayer niche facing Jerusalem was removed and the one facing Mecca was left. And there have you a little information on the mihrab. Thank you for, for watching.